Rwanda, a landlocked country in the Great Rift Valley, where the African Great Lakes region and East Africa converge. Located a few degrees south of the equator, Rwanda is bordered by Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It is highly elevated, giving it the sobriquet Land of Thousand Hills, with its geography dominated by mountains in the west and savanna to the east, with numerous lakes throughout the country. Rwanda's developing economy suffered heavily in the wake of the 1994 genocide, but has since strengthened. The economy is based mostly on subsistence agriculture. Coffee and tea are the major cash crops for export. Tourism is a fast-growing sector and is now the country's leading foreign exchange earner. Rwanda is one of only two countries in which mountain gorillas can be visited safely, and visitors pay high prices for gorilla tracking permits. Music and dance are an integral part of Rwandan culture, particularly drums and the highly choreographed in tour dance. Traditional arts and crafts are produced throughout the country, including imagongo, a unique cow dung art. With all this happening, Rwanda is engaging in many development projects to help build their tourism sector future and make both tourists and residents more comfortable. Welcome to Thinkrich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship rather than global pity is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you are missing out. Number 8 the 2 billion Rwanda francs Amahoro Stadium facelift. The Amahoro National Stadium, Amahoro Indoor Stadium, and the Paralympic Games gymnasium renovations we announced by Rwanda's Ministry of Sports. The upgrade, which could reportedly cost over 2 billion Rwanda francs, will see the stadium's capacity increase to 45,000 from the current 25,000 while the Indoor Petit State Stadium could accommodate 5,000 spectators. The T-State's current capacity is about 2,000 spectators. The upgrade of Amahoro Stadium goes with that of Indoor Stadium and the Gymnasium for Disabled Athletes because they make one project, which will be finalized this year. The upgrade is part of the government's broader project to develop a sports hub in Ramura, Gisabo District, under the Kigali Sports City Blueprint. The sports city will cover the whole area currently occupied by the Kigali Arena, Amahoro Stadium, Rwanda Biomedical Center, RBC, headquarters which must also relocate Amahoro Indoor Stadium and its neighboring tennis courts and Paralympic Gymnasium and the Ramura Metropolitan Police as well as Ramura Health Center. Number 7. Base Rukomo Nyaga Tear Road The transport sector support project aims to improve accessibility and mobility between the towns of Base, Jikambai, Rukomo, and Nyaga Tear and the living conditions of the population within its zone of influence. The project comprises four components. One, Upgrading of 51.54 kilometers between Base and Rukomo, including a component for the sensitization of local communities on sexually transmitted diseases, environmental protection and road safety. Two, related improvements comprising the construction of multifunctional centers and rehabilitation of school facilities along the main road. Three, institutional support to the project executing agency and four, clearing the right of way. The total cost, net of taxes and customs duties, is $78.99 million. The project sector goal is to contribute to the opening up of the country's interior and promote trade between northern and eastern parts of Rwanda through a direct link between the towns of Rubahu, Musans, Jikambai, and Nyagedar. The project's specific objectives are to 1. Improve the level of transport service on the upgraded section and the Pi population's living conditions, and 2 build the road maintenance planning and programming capacities of the administration. The beneficiaries are the urban populations of Jikambai, Nyagater, Rulindu, and Mayov, the rural populations of the three districts, 
producer associations, microfinance institutions, employees and staff of SNEs and BPW consulting firms, as well as Hollier's associations. Number 6. Kikikiro, Gujasura Expansion Road Expansion works for Sonitudes Bugisura Road, which stretches from Sonitudes, Kikikiro, to Akajura Bridge, Ex Nyabarongo, through Gahanga Town, were set to begin early February 2019. Expropriation of the property along this road will cost an estimated 4.5 billion Rwanda francs. Works to upgrade the road had been delayed pending expropriation process. Over 320 properties will be affected by the road construction, and the government has set aside 4.5 billion Rwanda francs for the expropriation exercise. With the first batch of the money was in 2019 to enable construction to start early 2020. Construction works for the road, which is 13.8 km long, will cost about $50 million, the equivalent of about 44.5 billion Rwanda francs, which is a loan from the Export-Import Bank of China, Exim Bank, while 4.5 billion Rwanda francs for expropriation will be paid by the government. The project will widen the road to ensure the traffic is smooth and quicker. Refurbished road will improve economic development of the country and residents of Kikikira district, urging people around here to take advantage of the project by supporting it and also seek jobs. They should also be careful with the traffic during the construction of the road to avoid any accidents. Construction works for the road will be done in three phases, from Akajura River Bridge to Gahanga Sector, from Gahanga to Nyanza Bus Park, and from Nyanza to Sonatubes. Number 5. Ruin the Urban Development Project The objective of the Urban Development Project for Rwanda is to provide access to basic infrastructure and enhance urban management in selected urban centers of the participating districts. There are four components to the project, the first component being provision of basic infrastructure in secondary cities. This component will support provision of basic infrastructure in the six secondary cities to enhance living conditions for residents and support LED. Eligible investments are those that are directly under the mandate of the district governments such as roads, drainage, solid waste management, and sanitation. The second component is the upgrading of unplanned settlements in the city of Kigali. This component will support the upgrading of an 86 unplanned settlement in Yarujinj district, comprising four cells, Rampara, Kiavu, Bariogo, and Agatare, located in the Ko case oldest neighborhood close to the central business district. The third component is the technical assistance for sustainable urban management. This component provides technical assistance to the six districts to strengthen their capacity for urban management by focusing on four key priorities for achieving sustainable urban development. 1. Building competitive cities by creating the enabling environment for LED. 2. Support for managing urban infrastructure. 3. Improving urban planning and strategic decision-making through the use of Geographic Information System GIS, and 4. Capacity building for scaling up urban upgrading. In addition to advisory services, the component will finance the provision of equipment, software, and related goods as necessary. Finally, the fourth component is the support for project management. Number 4. Kigali Arena Kigali Arena is a 10,000-capacity indoor arena which is meant for indoor sports such as basketball, handball, volleyball, and tennis, as well as concerts and conferences. It is the biggest indoor arena in East Africa and is located next to the 30,000-capacity Amaharo Stadium and the 2,500-capacity Amaharo Indoor Stadium. Built and finished in 2019, it hosts sporting events and concerts. Construction of the Kigali Arena, a joint project of the Rwandan government through the Rwanda Housing Authority RHA, and Turkish firm Suma, began in January 2019. 
the construction of the indoor arena was supervised by the RHA. Construction progressed at a fast rate, with around 1,000 to 2,000 people employed to work on the project both in day and night shifts. By mid-June 2019, the indoor arena was at least 70% complete and was set to be completed in July 2019. Number 3. Vujasura International Airport Vujasura International Airport is an airport project in Rwanda. The 818 million US dollars airport will be located 25 kilometers southeast of Kigali. The airport will feature a 4,200 meters runway and have capacity for 1.7 million passengers per annum following the completion of first phase works. Total construction is expected to be complete by 2022 and will include the runway, cargo terminal and passenger terminal with capacity for 4.5 million passengers per annum. Moda and Jill Engine Harriet E. Construkau Africa SA replaced China State Construction Engineering Corporation CSCEC, as the key contractor for the project. Construction commenced in 2017. The $700 million project is designed to be executed across four phases, with the first phase involving approximately 27 months of construction at an estimated cost of $400 million. The first phase was to be completed in 2019, at which point the airport will be able to accommodate 1.8 million passengers per annum. Number 2. 80 megawatts Jisagara Peat Plant A newly signed deal that seeks to develop an 80 megawatts peat power plant will boost Rwanda's ambitious target of achieving 70% of access to electricity by 2019 to all homes. This project is expected to increase 40% of national power capacity and it will bring more energy independence to the country since it is meant to use 100% of domestic fuel leading to reduction of imports. The launching took place in Jisagara District on this Tuesday, 10 May 2017 where the Minister of Infrastructure, Honorable James Musoni, together with other officials and various partners on the project broke the ground at the construction site in Mamba Sector. Alongside Akinara River, this 80 megawatts peat fired power plant will be constructed under a build operate, own and transfer, boot basis with a 26 year of power purchase agreement. It involves construction and operations of both peat harvesting facilities and power generation facilities. The project has a second phase, which has an additional 40 megawatts of capacity. With a total project cost of $350 million, and the construction is expected to be completed in three years. After the construction, HQ Power will operate the plant for 26 years and then transfer it to the government of Rwanda. This project is a synergy with other strategic projects that Rwanda has invested in and is expected to bring more energy independence to Rwanda. The project will provide more than 1,500 jobs in its first phase of construction, which will last three years while 200 others will get jobs during operation. These jobs will directly impact positively the livelihood of the Jisagara district residents and Rwandans in general. The plant will not only bring electricity to the people, it will bring more to this region and to the country. Number 1. Lake Kiku Methane Gas Extraction A hidden gem lies in the west of Rwanda, full of fear and promise. Just a few years ago, its full potential was untapped, its very nature was misunderstood, and it was considered a catastrophe waiting to happen. It is Lake Kivu, located on the border of Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and covering an area of 2,700 kilometers square. The lake contains naturally occurring carbon dioxide and methane gas, making it one of three lakes in the world, the other two are in Cameroon. Known to have a deep concentration of naturally dissolved gases, Lake Kivu, however, has almost 1,000 times more concentrated dissolved gases than its Cameroonian counterparts, which both erupted in the 1980s. Lake Kivu has about 300 billion metric cube of carbon dioxide and 60 billion metric cube of methane gas, giving it the capacity to produce between 120 million and 250 million metric cube of methane gas annually.
The reason for this concentration of gases is that the lake sits in a highly volcanic area, carbon dioxide enters the lake from the volcanic rock beneath it, and is converted into methane gas by the bacteria and fermentation of biogenic sediments in the lake. It has been likened to a bottle of fizzy drink that, when shaken, releases gas. For many years, Lake Kivu was considered a hazard by nearby residents. After several people drowned, a myth emerged that the methane gas had sinking properties. There were also fears that the water was becoming more acidic and inhospitable for fish, a large source of food and income for residents. And most importantly, there was fear of the lake erupting by methane igniting once it came in contact with air and concern that nearby residents could be asphyxiated from toxic greenhouse gases. Under Rwanda's transformation agenda, the government wants to address the growing energy deficit by providing access to power to all Rwandans by 2024. So it decided to change the narrative around Lake Kibu by attracting private investors. Kibu Watt, a project managed by Contour Global, was the world's first large-scale methane-to-power project. The project extracts methane from Lake Kivu to generate electricity, expanding household access to power, lowering costs, and reducing environmental hazards. Def 5, the first phase of the project, used three gensets to produce 26 megawatts of electricity for the local grid. The second phase is expected to deploy nine additional gensets at 75 megawatts, essentially doubling Rwanda's power production. Kivuwat extracts gas from 350 meters beneath the lake and returns carbon dioxide into it to ensure balance and continuity of the ecosystem. The methane gas is separated and used to propel turbines, which then generate electricity. The methane in Lake Kivu is estimated to have the capacity to generate 700 megawatts of electricity over a period of 55 years. Rwanda's share of the total generation potential is about 350 megawatts, with the rest being shared with the Democratic Republic of Congo. After watching this video, we hope you see the potential Africa has, so be a proud African and work each day to make your continent a better place. Thanks for watching please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on post notifications so as not to miss out on any of our amazing videos on Africa, entrepreneurship and personal development. <laughs>